All right, welcome to the Prowl Podcast. This is Trevor Grice. I'm on location in Memphis as we're at halftime of a soccer game, but I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk to someone who is um, kind of well-known in the Kiro area, uh, mostly because of his kids, but also because he's the guy that drives the bus. And we had a situation today where our bus driver, uh, we, are, we did not have a bus driver and we had to go to our game late and waiting for Mr. Brian Phillips here to um, be ready to go take our kids over there. And this is because there's a bus driver shortage. And uh, so I thought it might be a good opportunity to talk to Brian about what he sees and likes about this, because I know that he does. And um, if you're somebody out there listening to this that is kind of on the fence or looking for a part-time job in the afternoon, maybe this is something for you. But anyway, how you doing, Brian? It's good to see you again. Oh, it's wonderful to see you too. It's always a pleasure to talk with you. So why don't you give us a, when did you start driving bus? Uh, I started driving about three years ago and uh, it was pretty much right uh, when COVID had started. And so Carroll Schools was not open, but uh, USA Schools was still open. Uh, USA had a shortage of bus drivers, and they asked me to come and help sub. So that's where I really began my uh, bus driving uh, was in uh, the USA Schools. And then uh, once COVID uh, was over, um, we Carroll went back to school, and I became a full-time driver at Carroll. And so you do morning routes as well, like for kids, and then also these afternoon ones for school, or is it just some of time? Uh, it is morning and afternoon. I have my own per, uh, route, and so uh, I'm picking students up in the a.m. and p.m. And then uh, I do the uh, sports uh, trips uh, for uh, uh, all the sports teams, uh, volleyball, basketball, soccer, Football, you name it. Um, uh, if they they need a driver to uh, take them to uh, their away games, uh, I'm going to those games too because uh, I do enjoy doing that. So tonight, well, this game was supposed to start at 5.30, and we got notice that uh, we had to go to 6.30 because we didn't have a bus driver. Why don't you tell me a little bit about kind of what, you know, in particular, Kiro Schools is facing regarding bus drivers? Well, what we're facing is that we have a shortage. Uh, the routes are being condensed. Uh or there is uh, some drivers that are doing uh, double route uh, because we can't can you know we can't uh, condense uh, routes and eliminate them. So uh, with our shortage, uh, we have to do uh, our own routes and sometimes help out with uh, other people's routes um, to get kids home uh, after school. So it's uh, it's it's a pretty tough situation, uh, but we're trying to deal with it the best we can. So. Even though this is a minor inconvenience for like me as a parent coming to watch my son play soccer, this is just the tip of the iceberg regarding the bus driver situation, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. Um, and it's not just uh, Carroll Schools. It's it's you know it's statewide. It's nationwide. Uh, the bus drivers are uh, in demand, and usually it's uh, mostly retired people that are doing that job. Um, so uh, it's uh, also tough to. Uh, get the license now uh, with uh, more regulations that the states are putting out. So people are a little discouraged about trying to do that um, and uh, make it as a career. So what would that be like? Let's say someone's listening to this and say, you know, actually, it wouldn't be that big of a deal for me to go maybe be a sub driver to take kids to these games. I, you know, the Prowl podcast is already telling me that I need to go root these kids on. So what would somebody who literally has nothing but a normal driver's license need to do in order to get started? Uh, well, they do need to uh, obviously contact uh, the school uh, district that they're interested in going to, uh, which would be Carroll, of course, um, and talk with the transportation director. Uh, and then he would guide them into uh, what testing would need to be done through the state level and uh, also uh, through the school level um, just to get their uh, license or CDL. Um, and they do have to pass some tests uh, uh, through the state of Michigan uh, to get that CDL. And um, then after they get that, uh, they do have to have a uh, driving test uh, with the bus. But we do have a person on staff at Carroll that will uh, teach them about what they need to learn about everything about the bus. And then uh, when they do their testing and their road test, they're well ready to have that test done and pass it. And then once they pass it, they get their CDL, and then they basically are going to be hired by the school to drive. 
So what if somebody was like, I don't really want to do a morning route per se, but I'd love to be just this kind of sub driver. Is that an opportunity? I mean, I know they're desperate for everything. Uh, yes. Uh, the sub driver would be something that they would be able to do. Um, but what we have with the sports system um, when we're doing those trips, um, it's kind of based on a sign-up sheet in uh, in the uh, lounge with uh, the bus drivers. And uh, it's kind of on a, uh, you know, everybody, that, you, once you get a trip, um, if there's another trip that you sign up for right away, there might be another driver that wants that trip. So uh, we try to do it as an equal thing for everybody so that everybody gets a chance to drive. Um, but uh, with the sub driver, um, you know, we're looking at basically trying to get them in for the AM or PM route. Um, sub drivers usually aren't allowed to jump in and do the sports runs. Um, it's basically for more, more of a full-time driver to do those. When you talk about like the advantages, I mean, there's some obvious things like, oh, I don't know about dealing with kids and all of that type of stuff. But since you've been doing it for the past three years, what do you, what have you really in, enjoyed that maybe you weren't expecting? Uh, well, you know, I, I did have a lot of children go through the system where they were all athletic and we, you know, I totally enjoyed going to the games, taking their f friends and them to the game. Uh, you get into the game for free um, and uh, you also, uh, you know, uh, they do have a meal allowance uh, that you can get up to $10 uh, every uh, away trip uh, that the school will reimburse you for the $10 if you spend it on a meal. Um and I've just enjoyed uh, just to get to know the kids, the students, uh, and then I also get to know the communities that I, uh, you know, drive to. Um, and it's been really um, fun, exciting. And like I said, uh, you do get into the games for free. Uh, the kids are not really an issue. Um, they're all studying, you know, they're thinking about the game. They're not thinking about screwing around on the bus. So um, they're all well behaved and, uh, they keep the bus clean, which I always, you know, appreciate and every driver does. Um, so they're very respectful of the bus. And that's another thing that I, uh, enjoy with the kids is that they're respectful of the drivers are respectful of the school. They know they're representing. So it's, uh, it's kind of a pride thing also for me to take them and we're showing our school spirit by doing that. So. And Brian, do you think that's basically the same say with your morning routes i know it's a little bit different because it's not much representing but i mean still getting to know kids and if you're doing it for a while watching them grow up oh yeah that's the fun thing about uh being a driver also is that you're watching these kids develop grow up and basically the way i look at it is every kid that is on my bus is basically my family when they get on this bus so i'm in charge of their protection in charge of them getting home safely so they're all my children when they get on this bus. And so I also treat them like my children uh, with uh, in regards to respect, uh, you know, guiding them in in life, uh, not trying to be their mom or dad. But when they're on the bus, you know, I'm going to tell them when they're not doing the right things. And they are pretty much respectful and listen to what uh, my direction is with them on the bus. Well, Brian, I appreciate you taking this time. I know you were just sitting here anyway, and, and it was halftime, and halftime's almost over, and we're trying to avoid getting eaten up by mosquitoes. But um, thank you for that little look into bus driving. And um, I guess if you were to kind of have one thing that you would say to somebody out there who maybe is on the fence, what would that be, um, I guess, as a closing statement? Uh, I would just say that if uh, you've got spare time and you're looking for something to do, this is a perfect opportunity to meet great kids, great families, and to also help out the district, the school district itself. Um, and, you know, you're going to earn uh, an income um, on top of that, and you're also going to be able to uh, enjoy uh, going to sporting events and taking uh, teams to sporting events. And, um, you know, it's it's quite a, a joyful thing to do. Um, like I said, it's rewarding to see the kids growing up and, you know, when they go through uh, years and years and then they graduate, it's fantastic because you've seen them all the way to each step as they've grown into great young adults. That's interesting because as you're saying that, I'm thinking about like some of the reasons why I coach, right? It's like, I mean, because I did know my bus driver for years afterwards and knew who he was and would, you know, and I was always like, hey, how's it going? And, you know, and I think I would even roll out. Mr. Bus Driver, right? And I mean, that's how I referred to him. So that's a good point. Well, Brian, I really appreciate you taking your time. And thank you so much for giving us this this look into uh, bus driving and why maybe someone out there should help. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for uh, doing what you're doing. Awesome. Thanks, Brian.